And I don't, that's the only one I know. <laughs> I tell them at the jail, that's the only one I can say. <laughs> and I can't say it that way. I'm going to tell these young fellas, y'all better get busy working for the Lord. I was just coming to the church. I never forget Brother Mitchell came by the time I did. And they gave me a song book. And I was scared to death. I got up here, I couldn't even. I couldn't even find a song, but they made me leave one, so you're going to have to work. It's going to work. I'll fly away, 406. I tell them at the jail, I just, I just pat, pat my foot about three or four times, and it helps me. <laughs> Some glad morning when this life is over. Once again, Amen. 
but still we got to have the correct correct mind yeah. to enter the worship uh, service. We are to be focused to enter the worship service, and we are to worship in spirit, and we got to tell the truth. Amen. We ask the one that uh, doesn't share our convictions this morning to follow along with us uh, with the Bible, and the Bible only. We don't have no commentaries that we look at, yes, sir. and we ain't got no opinions that we put forth to you. Yes, sir. And we want you to know your, uh, you can ask a Bible question, and we'll give you a Bible answer about what goes on with the worship service, uh, how we do what we do, and the way we do it. Yes, sir. And with that, we'll condition our minds this morning to go forth with our worship service. Repeat after me, please. We come before you. We come before you. With thanksgiving and praise. With thanksgiving and praise. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. I'd rather be a doorkeeper. In the house of my God. In the house of my God. Than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Than to dwell in the tents of wickedness. Blessed are they. Blessed are they. That dwells in the Lord's house. That dwell in the Lord's house. Teach me, O Lord. Teach me, O Lord. The ways of thy statutes. The ways of thy statutes. And I will keep them. And I will keep them. Until the end. Until the end. Let the words of my mouth. Let the words of my mouth. And the meditation of my heart. And the meditation of my heart. Be acceptable in thy sight. Be acceptable in thy sight. O Lord. O Lord. My strength. My strength. And my redeemer. And my redeemer. Jesus Christ is our Savior. Jesus Christ is our Savior. He was dead. He was dead. But now he's alive. But now he's alive. He's alive forevermore. He's alive forevermore. Lord, we celebrate. Lord, we celebrate your glorious resurrection today. Your glorious resurrection today. Hallelujah. 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 Praise you, the Lord. Praise you, the Lord. We will praise. We will praise. And magnify. And magnify. His holy name. His holy name. Forever. Forever. And forever. And forever. Let the church say amen. Amen. Now that our heart this condition will go forth with our wish of service. We lay aside this time to give each and every one a chance to repent before wish of service uh, as needed. So we'll give you a chance to repent uh, or if anyone want to have a brief statement to make, this is the time we set aside for that. Thank you, sister. Uh, I brought about, I want to take a prayer for myself. I had a couple of uh, procedures this week. I had one Wednesday, I had one Tuesday, and I got to have a uh, lab work tomorrow. Amen. So I just ask that you all um, pray for me that all of my things come out well. We will certainly pray for you, sister. Good morning. I ask for prayer for myself. I've been having a lot of muscle spasm really, really bad. And I, get to, I go to the doctor Tuesday, so I'm going to ask somebody what's going on with Amen. Amen. Thank you, sister. Let's pray, come for, pray for Samson Avenue Church of Christ. They're experiencing a lot of breakdown. Oh, goodness. All right, we will, sister. Is there yeah. anybody else? I'd like to ask a prayer for uh, my co worker, Stella Carvajal. Uh, her son harmed himself. So, mm -hmm. uh, and we'll please, certainly please pray for keep uh, Casey in the prayer to his appointment tomorrow. Okay. Amen. Is there anyone else? All right, sister. Uh, I think Nancy Brad and I are supposed to be with him. Uh, some can't be doing what's not wrong. He's praying for her caregiver. I'm a caregiver. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you, sister. Is there anyone else? All right, sister. I'm going to ask for myself. I was in a lot of pain. I was like, man, I'm here for no way. All right, thank you, Sister Mallory. Is there anyone else? I don't see anyone. We'll have our son leaders to come forward.
Bye. Bye. 
those who are not able to be here because of illness. And we pray, Heavenly Father, uh, specifically for Brother Kenneth Densmore and the Walkers and, and Sister Townsend, Sister Errol Brewster, all of those who've been uh, having some difficulties here recently. And, and we pray for Sister Hoops as well, who yes. had her issues as well. And we Amen. know that you're able to help them. We just pray that you would intervene and make things better for them. We we'll also pray for the well-being of Sister Beck's uh, uh, friend who suffered, who was in an accident, and we pray that you would bless that individual, help him to uh, overcome, and pray that all will be well with her. Yes. And we pray also for Sister Heath, who uh, indicated that she has some issues as well, and we pray that you would uh, help her to overcome. We pray that all will be well with her. And also, Sister Diane, uh, Sarah would pray, pray that you would bless her, uh, help her, give her relief from her pain. And we pray that all will be well with her. And we pray for the uh, Sansom Avenue congregation yes. who suffered a, a break in. And we pray that you would uh, be with them during this time of uh, troubles. We pray that you get to the bottom of what has happened and, and pray that the appropriate action will be taken. And we pray. Father, for Casey, the grandson of Sister Woody, pray that you bless him. Pray that all will be well with him. We you know that you understand what is, you know what the problem is, and you're able to help him. Amen. And we pray also for uh, Sister Woody's co-workers who lost a son. We pray that you will be with them and comfort them during this time of bereavement. And we pray that you will be with the family, help them to support one another. And we also pray for Sister Beeson and her uh, her caregiver, Sister Sawyer. Pray that you would help them, help them to overcome whatever obstacles they're having. And we pray that you would allow Sister Beeson to have a speedy recovery. Amen. We also pray for Desmond, who's traveling today. And we just ask that you allow them to get back home safely and all be well with them. Amen. And we pray for any other individuals that uh, are having illness or problems. We know that you can solve any problem. No problem is too great for you, Father. Yeah. Yeah. It's actually you that you would intervene in, all the, in the lives of all brothers and sisters in the Lord's church. Yeah. We pray out not only for this congregation, but all congregations around. Pray that love, unity, and peace will prevail in every, every congregation. We also pray for those congregations abroad. So we have missionaries. We pray for their safety and pray that they will be successful in their efforts to take the gospel to those who are lost. And we just pray that you will help us to be successful in sharing the gospel with those who are in darkness as well. And we pray that all those who hear the gospel will be receptive and will render obedience unto you before it's eternally too late. And pray your blessing upon this country. Pray that more love, unity, and peace will prevail, and we just pray for those who 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 will suffer violence at the hands of people who seem not to have any kind of respect for human life. And we just pray for change of heart of all those who stand at a guilty distance from you, Lord. And we just ask that you would be a brother Noel as he bring the message to us today, and we pray that you will help every person to listen with receptive hearts. And be willing to render obedience unto the yes, truth. Yes. And we ask that you forgive us of our sins. Be with us all the days of our lives. And when life here is over, we pray that a home in heaven will await us. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 <laughs> oh Lord, I come, I come to receive.
78. No, 73, excuse me. 73 at the bottom. Thank you, Lord. I want to say thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. Concerning me, 
shepherds unto our flock. I want to invite you back to Romans 8, verse 38 and verse 39, a very familiar passage of scripture, and I'm sure you've heard it more than one time here at the Henry Street Church of Christ, but I want to bring it back, as Peter would say, to our holy remembrance. Sometimes we need to remember some things, right? Sometimes we need some reminders of where our mind needs to be. Clear your minds so you can receive the word of God here today. Remember John 4, 24, God is a spirit church, right? Mm -hmm. And they, they that worship him must do what? Worship him in what? Spirit. Spirit and in truth. So let's give him the center of our attention. Who cares about work tomorrow? Huh? Who cares about what you got to do later on today? We care about glorifying God because he's done everything for us, especially giving us salvation through his son. Our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When you have Romans chapter 8, verse 38, 39, somebody say amen. amen. Let's read it. Again, the Holy Spirit's words, God's word through the Apostle Paul, that will stand the test of time and will motivate us accordingly. It says in verse number 38, For I am persuaded that neither death nor life, 
nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Somebody say behind me, nothing will separate us, separate us. from the love of God. From the love of God. We'll go on with this. Now, if we're going to uh, introduce a subject today, it will be simply a question unto all of us. How determined are you to remain in the faith? How determined are you to remain in the faith? Now, we're going to use a parabolic type of teaching today. Remember that word just means we're going to use everyday things and symbols in order to understand the higher level of thought, the spiritual things that God is trying to convey unto our hearts here today. And so that's what Jesus was doing. He always taught in symbols, so we remember it, take it into heart, can relate to it, as well as be able to share it with other people. So I want to take you back down memory lane. I know that this reference is going to show some of our age because some of the people in this room were not even born when I'm going to make the statements I'm going to make. But let's think about this. Go back in history, back in time, maybe about 30 years ago, and remember the famous businessman and former presidential candidate back into the 1990s, Ross Perot. He made a very profound statement that I'm going to quote unto you. And I want you to keep this under your belt because it not only applies to things you do in the carnal world or secular world, but it also will apply, if you apply it correctly, to your spiritual life. And he said, and I quote, he said, most people give up just when they're about to achieve success. They quit on the one yard line. Of course, he's talking about football. And he continues on with his quote. He said, they give up at the last minute of the game, one foot from a winning touchdown. See, furthermore, many of you may have never heard of a name, but if you're in the business world, you've heard of him before. And that name is Ray Kroc. Ray Kroc's food has probably fed every mouth that's in this assembly right here today. If you know what I'm talking about, Ray uh, Kroc, he bought McDonald's in 1961, folks. And he convinced his founders. See, a lot of people don't realize that McDonald's started off small. As we like to say, it used to be a ma and pop type of situation. It used to be just a little burger stand. But now it's almost like it's a world superpower when it comes to the amount of economic uh, uh, revenue that generates on a daily basis. I'm going to tell you something that's going to blow your mind about it. But when things uh, was back in 1961, Ray Kroc convinced the owners, their founders of McDonald's to use the franchise model to expand burger shops around the world. Thus, each McDonald's is actually a self-owned business that operates under contract with McDonald's Corporation. But however, in the beginning, again, it was just a small, if I can use slang here today, a small burger joint that Ray convinced the owners to think bigger. Okay, he had to think, make them think bigger than just a mom and pop organization. You see, today they hire over a million workers in the USA alone, and they generate over $27 billion per year. Well, if you don't understand how much money that is, let me put it in perspective for you. Uh, at last, I looked at research on McDonald's. It is basically the number 90 economy in the entire world. So that means that their money they're bringing in is more than most countries bring in. And they're just one business in the United States of America. But the point of this inspirational story is this. Like Ray Kroc, you have to Think big. Oh, amen, somebody. Let me repeat after me. I'm thinking, I'm thinking big, big this, morning. this morning. Now, let's go on with the message here. That is, you have to have a goal in mind. Now, is that all right, y'all, here today? See, moving on, many of you have never heard the name 
Jack Ma. Now, to my knowledge, Jack Ma is the richest man in the whole continent of Asia. He is estimated to be worth $38 billion. See, one of his companies is Alibaba. Now, this is a giant international famous online marketplace, probably the equivalent of Amazon.com. But the inspiration is not in the success of Jack today. That's not the story I want you to take in today. I want you to understand the struggle Jack had before he became a success. You see, it is his perseverance to overcome rejection before his current success is that we need to be concentrating on this morning. So let me show you something about Jack before he became famous, before he became rich, and before he became successful. It is said that he applied for 30 jobs, which included the police and, ironically, Kentucky Fried Chicken. And guess what? He was rejected by every one of them. Oh, amen, somebody. And somebody as bright and as intelligent as him, and KFC won't even hire him. Oh, amen. It would have been easy for him just to fold his arms and quit. Man. Right then and right there, but he didn't. See, even in, in, see, Jack believed in himself. You see, he went to Harvard and applied to them 10 times. You know how many times he got rejected? 10 times. He got rejected every time. Now, this is a man that became a billionaire. One of the greatest businessmen of the entire planet that has ever lived. He couldn't get a job. He couldn't work for the police. He couldn't work for KFC. And he couldn't get into Harvard. But he still didn't quit. Oh, amen, somebody. That's somebody you got to look up to when it comes to Perseverance. He was denied by all of these organizations. So the lesson to be learned from his story is not to listen to the opinions of other people. Oh, amen, somebody. Amen. I want you to say behind me, I'm not listening, I'm not listening. to what other folks what have to say. To oh, say. amen. Let's move on. Believe in yourself. You see, our last inspirational world character that I want to present today is Harlan David Sanders. Oh, did that ring a bell to anybody? Yeah. Here today. Who was that man? Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders. That's right. He's better known as Colonel Sanders, founder of the iconic brand Kentucky Fried Chicken. He did not start the world famous restaurant until he was 60 years old. Oh, amen, somebody. See, a lot of folks trying to be on the fishing bank at 60. <laughs> oh, amen, somebody. A lot of folks trying to get Social Security at 60. Amen, somebody. Amen. A lot of folks just trying to put their foot up, foot up in the air and be able to watch all my children all day long <laughs> at 60. But Harlan had a different mindset. He wasn't going to let his age stop him from being the man he wanted to be. Oh, amen, somebody. Amen. That shows you that with God, anything yeah. is possible, huh? Amen. See, the, I, I read about him where he worked hard even sleeping in his cars at night. Now, remember, this is a 60-year-old man now. You see, he worked from the age of 60 to 73 years old when most of us are retired here in the United States in order to perfect his craft and grow his business. See, when he was done, it is said that he sold the restaurant for $2 million. Now, this is way back then. That's a lot of money back then. And the lesson to be learned here from Colonel Sanders is that it's never too late to pursue your dream. Oh, amen, somebody. Amen. Now, moving on then, the question now becomes, what can we learn? Now, remember, we're talking in symbols here today. What can we learn from the story of these three men? Well, we're going to imitate the teaching style of Jesus, but we're going to take in everyday things to show us a spiritual point. See, for example, we learn from Ray Kroc, McDonald's, to think what? To think big. Well, that brings it to mind the idea of thinking big when it comes to true and final happiness. Is your idea of thinking big related to the house, the type of house you own in this life? Does it have to be 10,000 square feet on multiple acres of land, or is that too small of a vision for you to have? Is your idea of thinking that big is related to the type of job you have? In other words, must you ascend through the ranks of the organization all the way to the top position known as chief executive officer, better known as CEO? Or is your dream to have a bank account in the billions like Aliko Dangote of Nigeria, 
Mark Zuckerberg of the United States or the oil baron and media giant Leonard Blavnik of the United Kingdom. Unfortunately, let me show you something here. If you want the lifestyle and riches of these men, then your goals are aiming too low. Oh, you thought I was going a different direction, didn't you? Huh? Your goals are too low. If these are the men you want to imitate, your goals are too low. If you believe that the house on the court, on, on the hill up there is all you need in this life, your goals are too low. If you believe that your happiness is tied to your bank account, oh, amen, somebody. You're looking for the wrong thing for happiness. You're looking to the wrong areas in order to feel good about yourself. Because all that stuff you don't know it by now, it's going to fly away. Amen. One day. All that stuff is going to let you down one day. All of that stuff is going to disappoint you one day. Oh, amen, somebody. You don't want to be sitting back in the corner looking at your life, looking back and saying, I've accumulated all this and it's all been vanity. As the Ecclesiastes writer has told, oh, I think I got some Bible believers in here. Here today, folks. You see, yes, in this lifetime, from a materialistic standpoint, we cannot go any higher than what these men have already achieved. So why is it that aiming for the lifestyle of these men an inferior goal to what we could be aiming for? Well, the Bible tells us. Job chapter 1, verse number 21 says, Naked came I out of what my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord what? Have taken away. What did he say after that, Job? He said, blessed be the name of the Lord. The name of the Lord. That means the Lord's name is going to be praised whether I'm on high or whether I'm low. Amen. He sang, but the Lord's name is going to be praised whether I have everything or whether I have nothing. Amen. And he sang in so many words. Remember, he said, though he slay me, what I will trust him. So he said, don't, whether I'm uh, alive on earth or whether I'm in my grave, I'm going to praise him the best way. Oh, y'all ain't with me here today. Y'all too bougie here today. Y'all need to take off your bougie hats and come on in here. We got to start dressing in jeans for y'all to act right. We might need to dress in some jeans or something. Y'all come off your high horse. Oh, y'all let me mess with you here today. Oh, I don't mean that literally now. But nonetheless, folks, there will be one day you're going to, there are things you will lose at all. Every one of us. I'm talking about the things we have materialistically. There's going to be one day the Lord gave and we're going to be able to say the word, Lord took away as we have in this life. We want these things that we have, they're not going to follow us through death. Amen. See, and yes, no matter how much money we have, no matter how many great surgeons we have on our staff, and even if we can buy our own personal hospital, we will all die one day. Amen. It's just reality. Amen. We can try to cheat it all we want. But all you do is deceive yourself. Right. Oh, amen, somebody. You can sleep in those cryogenic, uh, uh, the cryogenic chambers all you want. But guess what? You still gonna die. Amen. Oh, amen, somebody. I don't care how many, you can, you can rebuild yourself. What I mean by that, you can get a liver transplant, a kidney transplant, a heart transplant. I think they can do lungs now, but guess what? You still gonna die. Amen. Someday, amen, somebody. Amen. All you're doing is delaying the inevitable. Amen. It's going to come to all of us one of these days. Amen, somebody. Amen. It's just the truth. Amen. Here today, so the life of these billionaires, no disrespect intended, will end and are not the goals we should be striving for. Oh, amen, somebody. Y'all thought I was going to be Crespo, Creflo Dollar hitting you at first. I ain't talking no Creflo ministry. I'm talking about Jesus ministry. Amen, somebody. Amen. See, even more, we can learn a lot from Jack Maul's life in a symbolic way as well. Remember, Jack went through multiple rejections because he was, uh, before that is, he was successful at his craft. Huh? Well, I hate to give you this news flash, but rejection can come to us in multiple ways before we finally see Jesus face to face to enter the glory land we all labor for to enjoy one day. Amen. See, Jesus knew that this would happen. That's why he told us in Matthew chapter number 10, verse 36 and verse number 37 about rejection that we will experience in this life if you haven't gone through it already. He said in verse number 36 of Matthew number 10, he said that a man's foes shall be they of his 
own household. Oh, amen, somebody. Sometimes your family can be the worst enemies of everybody. Amen. I'm just telling you. Hear the truth. Verse 37 says, He that loveth father or mother more than me, what if Jesus says is not worthy of me, and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is what? Not worthy of me. See, this is one example of many that can be given regarding the rejection we will face throughout this lifetime before we enter the glory land way. Oh, amen, somebody. See, friends will mock us because of our faith. Be determined to fight through the rejection and stay faithful to Jesus anyway. Parents may turn their backs on us, but be determined to fight through this rejection and stay faithful to Jesus anyway. Strangers and co-workers will look at us as the biggest fools in the world. Oh, I said it too. Amen. But be determined to fight through even their rejection and stay faithful to Jesus anyway. I don't want you to say it behind me. I'm staying faithful to Jesus anyway. Oh, amen. Let's move on. Remember, who you lose, God replaces with those who will truly love you and accept you in the church. This is why Jesus said the following. In Matthew chapter 19, verse number 29, which reads, And everyone that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive a hundredfold, and shall inherit everlasting life. Stay faithful. I can encourage you for anything this morning, because it's more than worth it. Now lastly, moving on. We learn from Colonel Sanders. You know we're going to come back to Kentucky Fried Chicken, right? <laughs> See, we learn from Colonel Sanders that it's never too late to pursue your dreams and hard work. It will pay off. Amen. You are certainly going to have your trying times as a Christian. Oh, amen, somebody. Somebody ought to be saying in your heart, yeah, I've had some of them moments That's in my right. life. That's right, Christian. However, work through the discouragement through pure determination. Oh, amen, somebody. Let nothing stop you from walking with God when it's hard to do. Let nothing stop you from keeping the faith in the midst of doubters. Let nothing stop you from standing alone in the faith, even if everyone around you rejects the Lord. See, that, that is a hard thing to do. I'm, I'm going to sympathize with you because I've been there and done that. That is a hard thing to do. But you can do all things through Christ that what strengthens you. You, Philippians 4, verse number 13. It's never too late. Oh, like Colonel Sanders taught us here through his life. It's never too late to make, make a change in your thinking. Yes, you can teach an old dog a new trick. Oh, amen, somebody. He might take longer to roll over, but he'll get there. Amen, somebody. As long as he want to, what? Get there. Oh, amen, somebody. I look at my dog nowadays. He's 12 years old, and he's got serious arthritis. But when it's time to eat, yeah. ooh, things change. Yeah. You won't want to come down the steps with me to go to the bathroom. Oh, he'll, he'll, he'll soak, he'll sit down, and he'll take all day. But let me come upstairs with his two bones. Oh, he act like he's two years old, not 12. Start running and jumping and having a good old time. Because why? He want to eat. That's part of being a dog. Hey, they met somebody. So you'll be able, think about it, if we was dogs then, every time you go through something, think about it, it's time to eat. Amen, somebody. Amen. And then we'll wag our tails and jump around as if we was, what, puppies once again. So again, it's never too late to make this change in your thinking. Yes, you can teach an old dog what? New tricks. You see, Colonel Sanders is not too old to make the change to great success and neither is too late for us to commit fully to the things of God in our lives. So in conclusion, I want you to remember these key facts from the lesson today. The lesson is yours. You don't win an earthly, secular life if you quit. The same thing applies in the spiritual life. Quitters never win. Oh, amen, somebody. Don't be in that number. You can win and prevail if you hold on. I want you to say one thing here in conclusion with me. Say this behind me. I'm going to hold on. Hold on. Amen, somebody. May God bless and may he keep you. The message is yours. Amen. We're going to transition thoughts here as we typically do. And talk about that which is the greatest goal. Y'all know where we're going with this, don't you? Amen. We talked about how Aliko Dangote 
We talk about Mark Zuckerberg. We could have uh, put in many other names, Bill Gates, etc., Rockefeller, if you want to go in history. But these men would die penniless. Amen. Just like any other person is going to die penniless. Amen, amen somebody. Amen. But I know how to die rich. Amen. Oh, amen, amen, somebody. I think somebody else in here know how to die amen. rich. Because my Bible tells me in John 3, verse number 16, what true riches really is. The Bible says what? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believed in him shall not perish but have what? Yeah. Everlasting life. Oh, amen, somebody. Yeah. I'll tell the devil in a minute, go on and keep your pennies in this world because I'm rich because of eternal life. Yeah. Oh, amen, somebody. That's the real goal. That's the big goal. That's the big picture that you got to see right here, right now. Again, as the Bible tells us, it's appointed once for man to die, but after that, the judgment. So we're going to transition on at some point in life. The question is, is when? Amen. If I ask, was to ask you, when you going to die, what you going to say? I don't know. I'm so glad you said, I don't know. <laughs> because none of us do. Right. Amen, somebody. We may be here today, but next Sunday, we may not be here. That's why the Bible says our life is like a vapor. It's here one minute and what? Gone the next. That's right. And that's why James tells us we ought to say when we make plans, if the Lord wills, right. yeah. we'll do this and we'll do that. Right. When you go back to the book of Job, the Bible tells us that only God knows the bounds of man. Yeah. That means only he knows. I don't care what kind of doctor you got. Yeah. huh? Your oncologist, your cancer doctor don't even know Huh? He sees some things. He sees some average data. He sees some people uh, die in a certain time period. But that don't mean that's your time period. Amen. Amen. Huh? I've seen people get diagnosed that they were going to die and live 50 years. Amen. Beyond that. Because a doctor can't set that time. Amen. You can't set that time. People around you can't set that time. God, if you will, symbolically speaking, he's got that hourglass. He done filled it with all the sand of your life, and he done turned it over. And he the only one that can see how many grains of sand you got left. Oh, uh, we get arrogant sometimes. We get arrogant. Oh, I'm not going to come to Christ. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to do it on my own time. Who time? It's not your time. You don't own time. You didn't create it. Think about this. Who created time? God did. And Genesis said, let there be light. Huh? And that was what time was created. So you tell me, now I want you to be able to do this now. If you think you're going to live tomorrow, I want you to say right now, be dark outside. <laughs> okay, let me stop that. Let me, let me stop. <laughs> Being silly. I want you to be able to tell me, son, go sit down somewhere. I'm talking about S-U-N, son. Yeah. I want you to be able to say, sun, sit down, moon come up, stars come out. Huh? Because if you think you're in control of time, you've got to be able to do all those things because those are the things that created time. Amen. That's how we track the calendar. And God was the one that created it in the first place. And if God created it, he sustains it, and he knows it, and he can do whatever he wants to do with it. Amen. You can. So quit playing, God. Hmm? Quit playing with your life. Quit deceiving yourself. You have no control over these things. What God gave you control over is your heart. It's whether or not you want to be rich in eternal life or not. You just heard one of the things that God just said. You've got to believe in Jesus as the Son of God. That he literally came from God himself. Died on that cruel cross of Calvary in order to erase the guilt of our sins. Oh, we've all messed up. Oh, they say in your own heart and be honest, I've messed up. I've messed up. See, I believe that all of us are honest here today. That's why the Bible tells us that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Oh, amen, somebody. So the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is what? Eternal, Eternal life through Christ Jesus. That's all Romans 3, 23 and Romans 6, verse 23. Be honest with yourself. You need some help here today. 
You need the gift of Christ in your life who died for you so that you can see heaven as your home, which is another equivalent of saying what? You'll have eternal life. You will not get there without him. Amen. Acts 4 verse 12 said there's no, no other name under heaven in which we will be saved. Huh? Jesus said himself in John 14 verse number 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father, what? But by me. me. Meaning there's only one way. And that one way is what? Christ Jesus. Oh, amen, somebody. When you try to go down a one-way street the wrong way, what, what is the potential that's going to happen to you? You'll have a head-on accident, and you'll be dead. you got to go with the flow of traffic. I mean, you got to go down the what? One way, which is what? Christ Jesus. There's no salvation without him. So hopefully you believe. That's part of the plan of salvation. Once you believe, you got to take on a Christian lifestyle. That's called what? Repentance. Repentance. Luke 13, verse number 3, verse number 5 is the commitment you're making up front to live the Christian life and to turn your back on a life that God will not approve of. Amen. That's all repentance is. It means to turn to God and away from the world. To change your ways. He requires that of us. He also requires us to confess Jesus as the Son of God, which is our Lord. You'll see that Matthew 10, 32, another passage of Scripture, show us we got to make that confession with our mouth that we believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. And then we must go down in the water and grave of baptism. Oh, amen, somebody. Amen. I don't know about you, but I used to have a babysitter. She was my uh, great-grandmother, uh, Cassionia Ezel. And I know when we used to go out and play football, we used to play baseball. See, we weren't always video game people. Y'all hope y'all understand that lifestyle. Y'all can relate to that. But I remember Grandma, whenever I would come back in her house, you know what the first thing I had to do? Go get in the bathtub. Oh, you weren't going to sit around. Oh, can I be real ethnic with you? You wasn't going to sit around my grandmother stinking. I didn't say stinking. I said the black way. Yes, I did. Amen, somebody. My DNA tested. I'm 69% black. I can do that. Is that all right, y'all? Amen, somebody. You couldn't sit around her like that. She was from old school. You didn't do that. Huh? So you had to go get in the bathtub. And there wasn't no showers. It was one of the bathtubs with the, with the legs on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Had them, had them on. Uh, that's what a crawfoot. There you go. Then you go upstairs. You can't even get in her bed because you're too short to get in it. Amen, somebody. <laughs> Let me go back to where I'm supposed to be and what we're talking about here today. So you have to wash yourself to be in the presence of greatness. Huh? My great grandma was a great person, but I know somebody greater. I'm talking about God himself. You just can't come any old way to be in God's house. You got to be cleaned up first. That's why he tells you this is spiritual. Now, this is not physical. He says in Acts 22, verse 16, Why tarryest thou? Arise and be baptized and what? Wash away your sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Oh, amen, somebody. So when you go down in the water, God is saying, and from a spiritual standpoint, it's not for your skin. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 21 says that, but it's for an answer of a good conscience toward God. Why do you have a good conscience when you come out of the water and grave of baptism? Because your soul has been cleansed of everything you have done wrong called sin in God's sight. That's when God forgives you. That's when he erases it. And that's when he forgets about the things you have done that has separated you from a peaceful relationship with him. That's what it is. And then also he not only uh, washes away your sins, he also adds you to the family of God. Being in the family of God, and the Bible calls it by several different terms. One of them is being in Christ. And that's what Galatians 3 verse 27 talks about. Those that have been baptized have been what? Baptized in Christ. That's when God becomes your father. That's when he puts your, his name on you. That's when you become a child of God. Then he also changes your status. Was well, that all right, John? That's why Jesus says in Mark 16 verse number 16, he that believes and is Baptized shall be saved. See, change the status, right? Because before that, you was damned. Can I say it the way it is? Before that, you was under his wrath. Before that, you were not only on the way to heaven, but on to what? Eternal punishment. So that means what? 
your status has what? Changed. So that's why he says in Mark 16, verse number 16, after you come out, out of the water grave of baptism, he that believes and is what? Baptized shall be saved. He that believes not shall be damned. Why did he say he that believes not shall be damned? Because if you don't believe, you won't be baptized. Remember what baptism stands for in the Bible. It means to become a follower of somebody else. And so if you don't believe, you're not going to follow them, especially when they tell you to get in the watery grave of baptism. That is the sign that you're giving God that I have become your follower. That's what it means in the Bible. That's what they had to do when you look at the Jewish religion. Jew, uh, true Orthodox Judaism, I'm talking about Old Testament, really, in the time of Jesus. That's why that uh, people that didn't get baptized by John the Baptist were baptized by Jesus were what? Rejected by God. Because that means you have become a follower of the person that baptizes you. Oh, amen, somebody. I hope that didn't get by you. So that means if you have not been baptized, you have not become a follower of Jesus. That's how the Jewish mind understood baptism. Amen, somebody. Amen. That's why Jesus had those arguments all the time with the Pharisees and the scribes who refused to be baptized by John the Baptist, who refused to be baptized by Jesus and his uh, uh, apostles, because why? That would have been saying he has become a follower of Jesus. Amen. Oh, amen, somebody. Amen. So when people say, oh, well, I prayed my way into being in Christ, how did you do that? <laughs> that is foreign to the Bible. Huh? There's nobody that's prayed themselves into being a child of God. There's not one example of that in the Bible. Amen, somebody. Amen. Paul would have been the best candidate of that. Because when you look at Acts chapter number 9, Paul was already praying. But what was God doing? He was sending the preacher. Huh? What did he tell Ananias? He said, in other words, he showed him how he would identify Paul. He said he's praying. So if it was nece wasn't necessary for Paul to be baptized, why did he send Ananias in the first place? And Ananias was the one that told him, Acts 22, verse number 16, why, what, tarryest thou, arise. Why did he have to arise? Because he was already on his knees praying. That's right. He, he was basically telling him, that's not going to work, Paul. Get up. Do something different. And do what? Be baptized. Huh? Because if he'd have been savable, he could have stayed down there. Lord, I thank you in my heart. Oh, you don't get it. Man. Forgive me of my sins. He'd have been saying that still. But what did Paul have to do? He had to get off his knees. He had to what? Arise. And what? Be baptized in order to what? Wash away his sins. The Bible is easy to understand. We're the ones that complicate it. So the plan of salvation is simple. Hear the word of God, but leave it. Talking about the testimony of the Bible that says that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, your Lord and Savior. That's what it means to believe the word of God. Repent of your sins, which means to take on a Christian lifestyle. Confess Christ with your mouth that he is the what? Son of God, which, you mean, which means your Lord. And what? Take him on in baptism so you can become his follower for what? The forgiveness of your sin so you can become a child of God and so that you can have a different status. You go from unsaved to what? Saved. And once you do that, get out of the water grave of uh, baptism rejoicing, right? Because now you are a child of God. You're saved if you stay faithful unto death. Never forget what Jesus said to the church now because you're part of church. At that point, God's family. He said in Revelation 2, verse number 10, to me and you and everybody in the church, he said, what? Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Revelation 2, verse number 10. What did we just talk about today? We talked about how determined are you to remain in the faith. That's what Revelation 2, verse number 10 is talking about. Be thou what? Faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Keep believing no man to the end, and heaven's going to be your home. If you're a child of God, you walk disorderly. Please, please, please. Don't give up. We talked about that too today, right? Amen. Quitters never win. 
you got to give it another shot. You got to give it another opportunity. You got to give it another try in order to be saved if you're falling short. That's what uh, Acts 8, verse 22 and 1 John 1, 7 to verse number 10 is talking about. Talking to the church, not the world. It says if you're a sin, you're supposed to do what? Do what? Repent. Confess your fault to him and ask him what? To forgive you. And he's going to forgive you right then and there. So this is your opportunity. God is reaching out to you right now. You just got to take his hand so that you can be saved if you're not a Christian. You got to take his hand today, symbolically speaking, and come back to him if you're a Christian that's falling short. And so we're going to allow our song to come on up. Let's give him an opportunity to sing a couple verses or so, whatever the uh, amount may be. We're not going to buy any here today. And that's the, uh, what we call the song of invitation. We give you an opportunity to come down that aisle. Give me your hand, God, your heart. I'm just going to take your confession. You believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. If you confirm your faith, we'll baptize you right here, right now, for the forgiveness of your sin and salvation of your soul. If you make it known that you need prayer, if you're a Christian that's fallen short, we'll do that for you too. Amen. Because we are our brother's keeper. Won't you come together as we stand and sing the Lord's invitation? Won't you come? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? We thank you for your son, Jesus, who died that cruel, cruel death on Calvary's cross for the whole world of sins, Lord. Lord, we bow thanking you for the church through which we have need of salvation, Lord, that uh, you would be with us, Lord, that we are able to serve you 
and the capacity that you would have us to, Lord. Lord, thank you for unity here today. Lord, thank you for love here today, Lord. We ask that you would just uh, let us repent of our sins, which are many, Lord, which are confusing, which are complicated, Lord. But just let us touch the hem of your garment, Lord, as we progress, Lord. And let us be able to sin less and less and less and less. Lord, we ask that you let us carry your word in our heart, Lord, as we go about from day to day, Lord, and be able to tell everyone the good news of the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, Lord. And Lord, we bow praying uh, for the sick and the shut in everywhere, Lord, that you would just bless those, Lord, who stand in need of prayer, Lord, and which all of us do, Lord, and we need you to carry us through each day, each minute, each hour, and also our next breath, Lord. Because we are nothing without you, Lord. Yes, you're the beginning and the end. You're the Alpha and Omega to yes, each and every one of us and until life or itself, Lord. And we just bowed this morning, Lord, asking you to forgive uh, uh, the ones that uh, may sway the country wrong, Lord, that uh, you would just give them new light in their life, Lord. And, uh, and let them be able to uh, make decisions, Lord, that will develop everybody's minds and hearts to know you in the capacity that you would have us to, Lord. Yes, Lord, we bow praying for our president, Lord, that you would just give him the insight uh, uh, to uh, carry out his duties, Lord, always looking up unto you, yes, Lord. Lord. We pray for Congress. Lord, that you would just supply them with the steadfastness, steadfastness in your word, Lord, yes, yes, Lord, that they will make the laws that's needed, Lord, for us to be able to serve you, Lord, each and every day, Lord. And we pray on behalf of the work that's killing, Lord, that's going on in this world, Lord. Yes, and uh, we know it's a terrible sin to fall in the hands of the living God. Yes, sir. Lord, we pray that you will look down upon our young people, Lord, and continue to develop their minds, Lord, in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable unto you, Lord. Yes, sir. And Lord, we pray that your word will spread over the whole world, Lord, at a rapid pace, Lord, yes, because we need you, Lord, yes. and we need you now. Uh, uh, each and every day, Lord. Yes, and sir. We also come praying for the ones that's not here. Lord, we pray that you would just give them the insight that they stand in need of to uh, uh, be here uh, each and every Lord's day, Lord, to serve you uh, in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable unto you, Lord. Yes, yes, sir. We also come praying, Lord, that you would be with the elderly, Lord. Uh, supply the elder the, the needs that they stand in the need of, Lord. Let us be vigilant, Lord, and looking at them, Lord, and uh, uh, preparing uh, every thought that's needed that they don't think of, Lord, to uh, help them out along the way, Lord. Yes. And we also come praying, Lord, that you would just uh, uh, be with us as we go throughout the rest of the work week, Lord. Uh, let us be passionate. Let us be kind, Lord, and let us uh, use the words that you would have us to use, Lord, to uh, pierce their heart uh, with the kindness and the love that you provide, that they'll come to you for it's everlasting too late, yes. Lord. And we pray for the ones that stray by the wayside, Lord, that you would just give them a new heart, Lord. Let them come back for it's everlasting too late, Lord. And Lord, when the last day come, Lord, and you open the Lamb's book of life, Lord, we pray that you'll look at each and every one of us and yes, say, well Lord. done, thy good and faithful servant, Lord. Yes, and, uh, these and other blessings we ask in your son Jesus' name that the church say, amen. Amen. amen.
for it is time to uh, give back to the Lord a portion of what he's blessed us with. You know, uh, and, and we're talking about a financial blessing. And if you haven't given your contribution at this time, we ask that you uh, raise your hand and one of these brothers will come back and uh, pick up your offering. And if you haven't did pick up your Lord's Supper packet, raise your hand as well and they'll pick it up to bring you Lord Supper. You know, we're, we're required to uh, uh, give back to the Lord uh, a portion of what we have, of what he has blessed us with, I mean, in a financial way. You know, some things you can't give back. He blesses us with good health, but, you know, uh, we can't give that back, but these financial blessings, you know, we if we're able to give back to the Lord a portion of that. And, and he has always required his people to give back to him uh, to make a, a sacrifice to him. Amen. And today, we continue to follow the, the example of the first century Christians. In 1 Corinthians chapter 16, verses 1 and 2, the Apostle Paul wrote, Now concerning the collection for the saints, as I have given orders to the churches of Galatia, even so do ye upon the first day of the week. Let every one of you lay by him and store what God has prospered him, that there be no gatherings when it comes. Let us give thanks for the all. The eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we bow this time just acknowledging your greatness. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your loving kindness and all the many ways in which you blessed us. But we uh, thank you at this time specifically for the financial blessings, whatever source yes. of income that we have. We thank you, Father, for, the, for that. And we just uh, ask that they will bless the offering that's been received this morning. Help us to use it wisely in the upbuilding of your kingdom. And we pray, Heavenly Father, for those who gave. We pray that you will continue to bless them and that all will be well with them. Yes. Sir. And we pray at this time, Heavenly Father, that uh, you help us to always understand or believe your word that teaches that we must uh, of sacrifice in order to be pleasing to fully. It is in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Why did my Savior come to earth? and the cruel pain of the cross he administered supper to his disciples as we partake of the Lord's supper which commemorates his sacrifice let us meditate and reflect upon the suffering and the great sacrifice of the Lord to all humanity upon the cross the apostle Paul wrote and it's recorded in the first book of Corinthians chapter 11 beginning at verse 23 for I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take thee, this is my body which broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Let us pray. Now, Heavenly Father, we come again just uh, praising you for all the great things that you've done for us. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for love so great that you sent you uh, only with God's Son into the world in order that we might have eternal life. And we just 
uh, realize Heavenly Father without, without uh, your Son Jesus' sacrifice. We uh, can't, could not be saved. And we pray that you would bless his bread to represent that Son's body and pray that we would take a vision of manner that's pleasing and acceptable unto you. It's in your Son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 For the same manner also he took the cup when they sub saying, This cup is the new testament in my blood. This do you as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death till he come. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily, shall be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily, he has been drinking damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this calls many weak and sick among you, and many sleep. Let us pray. Eternal God and Heavenly Father, we come again just uh, thanking you for your son Jesus who uh, gave up heaven, came to earth, and died on Calvary's cross in order that we might have eternal life. Yes, yes. Heavenly Father, we realize had it not been for the shedding of his blood, there would be no remission of sin. We pray that uh, that will bless this fruit divine that we're about to partake of. And we pray that as we partake of it, we will do so in a manner that's pleasing and acceptable unto you. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 But at this time, we want to thank you, everybody, for being here this morning. And, and it's always a pleasure for us to be here on the first day of the week. Amen. And the Lord Amen. bless us to go all week long and, and give us the health and strength to come so we ought to be willing to come and, and, and not let anything stand in our, our way of coming. Amen. You know, no often times people may be out of town. But, uh, <clears throat> We 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 still want people to know that we're we're back open here. It's only uh, coming back in the building, and, and we just uh, want you to know that you all can come and be with us. Amen. Amen. You know, not not for us so much, but it's for your own good. Amen. You know why? You know the Lord requires us to come together upon the first day of the week. You know, and we ought to be glad to come. And you know, we when we look over the audience this morning, it just asks us, where are the men? Where are the men? You know, I don't know the reason why everybody's out, you know, but, you know, uh, if you could be here, then we ought to be here. Amen. So uh, we encourage someone. You know, you may know somebody that's not, you may be closer to them than someone else. That's right. So you encourage them to come and be in the assembly right. of something. You know, there's always a place for you in the Lord's house. Mm -hmm. You know, well, I tell people, I've said this a number of times, that, you know, we, 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 need, we need your help to, do, to carry out the mission of the church. In other words, we, we need people who, who volunteer to, to do things, you know, to, uh, to help out. But, you know, if you don't... You, we can't appoint people to do things that they're not willing to do. Mm -hmm. We can ask people, but we, yeah, I'd like for somebody to come and ask, what can I do? Yes, right. What can I do? Right. And we'll, we'll get something for you to do. Yes, sir. You know, Sister, Sister Kyle has been coming, uh, taking temps. You know, if somebody else want to help, you know, uh, 
Don't, don't ever say, that. well, they wouldn't let me take them. <laughs> <laughs> she, she's not going to want to fight you over taking them. <laughs> uh, whatever, uh, whatever it is, you know. There's always something that you can do. And I certainly don't want to, I, I don't, I don't want to, I'm not going to have any ill feeling toward anybody to ask me to do something that I've been doing. Yes, sir. You know, uh, wow. it'll come right on. That's right. You may some, see something that needs to be done that, I, that, that we haven't seen. So anyway, enough of that, I guess. And, and we haven't been having announcements, but certainly if, if you had an anniversary recently or have one coming up, then certainly we want to congratulate you, those who are having birthdays. And if you... Uh, if you had a birthday and nobody said anything, and happy birthday to you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. We used to have a, a list of these things. It may be in the bulletin now. I don't know. I, I do know one thing about July. I know some of the people. I know Brother Sawyer's birthday was in July. He's no longer with us, but uh, uh, Dion was born in July. And I believe his birthday is next Sunday. Sister, 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 your yes, sister Hook's birthday is yes, on the 16th. Whenever that is. Right. Okay. All right. Happy birthday to all of those in the middle. Yes, sir. At this time, we're going to ask you to stand for the closing hymn and benediction. When the Savior calls, I will answer. person in need and asking individuals to make a contribution to that if you're able to do so I don't know when the last day for that is but uh, it's been late it's been long enough enough time has passed if you got it today don't leave without making your contribution to to I think sister Heath is getting that sure. and I'm sure they really would appreciate it <clears throat> and at this time <clears throat> excuse me and we're gonna also mention the visitors. If you're visiting with us today, we want you to know that you are always our esteemed guest. And, yeah. and today is no exception, so uh, we're always delighted to have visitors, so we ask that you come back and be with us again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. The eternal God, our Heavenly Father, we come just thanking you for this opportunity to come together to share in another worship service, and we pray, Heavenly Father, that all the things that were said and done have been pleasing and acceptable unto you. We pray that you will help us to have a greater desire to do the things that please you and help us to not do those things that bring shame to the church, but help us to continue to press on and encourage one another and help us to take advantage of the opportunities that we have to help someone else to understand yes. him will and way. We pray that you will be with us as we go our separate ways. Go with us, protect and guide us, and allow us to come together again at the next appointed time. It's in your son Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Lighten up, read up.